Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to video number 15, test part 2, our first unit test. So what we're gonna do is, we add a dependency to our Scala project, to the Scala test library, which we're going to use to write unit tests. And then we will write our first unit test, which, uh, which will test very basic or very, very simple uh, functionality, just to get a v an overview of how it works. But we also have to understand what testable code actually is. And I can tell you right now, the code that we have written previous in the previous videos is not testable at all. Because what we would like to do is we would like to test the functionality in small units and assure that these units are working correctly. Therefore, we need to create units which provide self-contained functionality. And as we would like to call them, these units from our tests, we would like to keep their contexts as small as possible. And as contexts, I mean their class instantiation. So the um, entity they are defined in and also the parameter list they are taking. So if we have very complex contexts, it's very messy to instantiate and call these units from our tests. And therefore we will have to refactor our code into a more testable code. All right, so here's our IDE. Here's the um, object main, which is our application object. And then we have also the method main, which is the entry point to our program. And within the main, we instantiate, first of all, the Spark session, and then we read the data frame, then we rename some columns, and then we also provide some yeah, window window function and grouping and also sorting and so on. And what we want to test is basically this functionality because we don't know if it is working correctly at the moment. So the first thing we have to do is to write a test is to add a dependency in our SBT file. So let me open SBT, build.sbt. And here we will have to add a dependency for the Scala test. So Scala test is a library which you can use with Scala to write unit tests. And I will use this one. And in the install guide, you get the uh, statement you need to include this into your SBT project, which we're going to do. So I will simply add this line here. And the last, after the last percentage sign here, it says test which means you cannot access this library from the main package in your Scala project. So I hit Control, Command, Shift and I to rerun SBT to reimport the project. And then we will head over to our test package here. And here we will create a new Scala class called um, first test. And if we look at the quick start guide here at the Scala test documentation or user guide, uh, you can see that you have to de uh, select your testing style. And I will use this any fun suit here, which basically allows us to declare tests with a string describing what it's supposed to do, but the rest is code. So our test class has to extend um, the extends any fun suit and it has been imported so we get the suggestion from the IDE and now we can write test and say okay first unit test and within that we can write our functionality now in order to show you how we call a unit from for example our main object let's head over to the main object and define a new function down here which we call simply add and it takes two numbers x which is an int and then y which is an int and returns an int which is simply the sum of the two and this one we would like to call from our test so we can rename it um, add or to add add uh, two, three returns five, which describes what our, our test is doing. So what we want to do is from the main object, we want to call add 
and pass in two ins, two and three, and save it in a value called result. And now we want to assert that the result is actually five. Now we have tested our add method. We would have to import Now here we actually have to pass in a boolean condition, which we can look up here. So the assert basically throws a test failed exception if the assertion is not correct, which we are specifying as a boolean. So the result has to be five, otherwise the test fails. Now this we can execute now, which will be our test. All right, that was quite fast and the test has completed. And if we changed our functionality now, so we'd call x plus y minus one, so we have changed the code, the test will fail. So it gives us certainty that, so the test has failed. So basically it gives us certainty that the unit functionality has not changed because this one is also a clear intention from the developer what the unit is supposed to do. All right. So that's a first test, which is pretty much useless for our use case because it doesn't test the code we have written previously. But we, what we wanted to do is now that we understand how we can call units is to refactor the code that we have previously created. Now we cannot call this main method from our test because what would happen, we would have to pass in some arguments here and then also it would instantiate a spark session and yeah basically return nothing because it's a uh, it's the main method um and also it would load some csv file all of which we would not like to have happened uh, as we are trying to test only this code fragment down here so we don't want to have to place a csv file in some i don't know a uh, very specific path here so that we can run our test but rather we would like to isolate this functionality down here into a small unit that we can test or that we can call from our test then. So what I will do is to refactor this into a method within the object main. And now we can give it a name. And what we're doing here, also refactoring into units has another uh, nice effect. We can label or give names to a couple of lines of code, which makes the code nicely readable and here we would like to have a very um yeah descriptive name for our method here and we would for example say highest 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 closing prices per year something like that so per default, it would, it would give us a private visibility. So we wouldn't be able to call it from our test package. So I will put it public here in the first place. And as parameter, we take one data frame. And for now, it wouldn't return anything, which is fine for now. So the IDE has also introduced this call to our function here um, at the position where it has been placed before. And I would like to refactor this now because we're actually not returning a unit, but we would like to return a data frame so that our caller here gets back a new data frame. Now, we don't have access to the Spark session because the Spark session has been instantiated within the main. So either we could pass in the Spark session into our small unit, but what we can also do is use the data frame that we are handed in because from the data frame, we can also retrieve the Spark session. So what we can say is, for example, stock data dot Spark session dot implicits, implicits and then all. And now we have no compiler errors here as well uh, anymore because we have Im imported uh, implicits. And we don't want to explain the logical plan or all of the plans, but rather we would like to return this transform transformed data frame. Now I'm not so happy with stock data and the name because it's uh, it could be any any kind of data which we are, uh, we are passing into this um, unit here. So I will simply call it df for data frame. And here's also the return 
um, statement of our small function definition here. And now we can basically store the result of this call in, let's give it a name, highest, highest closing prices per year equals the result of this function if we pass in our stock data. Now we have refactored out our code into a testable unit. So what we could do from our test here is to not call the main add, which I have deleted, but rather we could call main dot highest closing prices per year. So what we can do now is basically pass in a data frame. So we can actually have test data, which we give to this unit and get back to transform data frame. And on that result, we can basically as assert that the transformations are correct. All right, that's what I wanted to show you here. In the next video, we are going to actually write the data frame test.